In today's video, we are going to examine how to stop allowing narcissists to live in your head rent free. We are going to learn how to stop focusing and wasting so much time thinking about these people, how to prevent this type of energy drain and waste of time from happening. Before we get going, I want you to know this, no matter how down and out you are in all the darkness that surrounds you, and believe me, I have been in that sunken place. They drug you down into this sunken place so you would be like them and they could pretend to be like you. Only you, here's the light at the end of the tunnel, only you can fill up again with laughter, joy, love, and inner peace. They cannot. I know you are in severe pain. Pain. I know that agony, that emptiness, that loneliness, that is not yours. You are a sentient human being. Don't you dare give up on yourself. This is where the iron and the steel are forged in your mind. So embrace the pain and don't you dare give up on yourself. Ever. The human mind has no limitations. It can take the pain of abuse and turn it into power. <laughs> it's time to move on, baby. Gotta be a warrior in a world full of evil. Welcome to Fully Alive Again. Let's go. Hello, human family. How are you? I hope you are well. For those of you new to the channel, I would like to welcome you to Fully Alive Again. My name is Darren. I'm a narcissist researcher, coach, author, and survivor of a covert narcissist mother, siblings, and a 23-year marriage to a covert narcissist. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> I've been there too. I feel you from every experience you can think of. I've been there with you. I understand. And to my Fully Alive Again Warriors, I'm so glad you're back. I deeply appreciate you guys and your viewership. I got nothing but love for you. And to everyone watching, you guys, I really do need your help. You know we are living in turbulent times and the world is upside down. So please help me move and grow this channel. Get involved. Do more than watch subscribe to the channel it's as simple as that hit and like the videos if i drop some knowledge that you appreciate and most importantly share your experience share your life experiences and thoughts about the show in the comment box this not only helps you it helps others and together we will become and remain fully alive all right you guys does that make sense help a brother out <laughs> all right let's go you know, letting a narcissist live in our head is what is called rumination. Rumination is a normal part of narcissistic abuse. Rumination is simply thinking over and over about their abuse. You see, the narcissists never give closure. That's not a part of their design, their MO. Their, their design is to cause chaos and craziness and to prevent you from being able to laugh, love, live happy, and achieve your goals and live a positive, productive life. Therefore, rumination is part of their wake. It's like getting punished and abused twice. It's a part of what they do. And so we have to become very cognizant of that, that this, this rumination causes paralysis. It leaves us in a narcissistic rut. I was there for two years pondering what went on, examining my entire life. And you know what? This rumination, I believe, is part of the normal awakening and part of the path to becoming fully alive again. I won't shame anyone from doing this. This is a normal way out of the narcissistic abuse abyss that you've fallen into. However, there are people who spend the rest of their lives there. 
There's people that spend way too much time there. And if you're not feeling happy or energized about your life after one, two, three years, you really want to take a deep look. You know, I tried to bounce back within a year. There's too much work to be done, especially if you've been raised by a narcissistic parent or in a long-term relationship with one of these monsters. Now, the typical rumination patterns are like this. Thinking about, why me? What did I do? I can't believe this happened to me. It's also thinking that the world is just not what you thought it was and that the world sucks. That it's, it's, it's an ugly place full of destructive, evil people. And that's a part of it. That's a part of it. Yes, that's a part of the world. But the world is gloriously wonderful. I was looking at a sunset tonight and I was just amazed by the beauty of the sunset. You know, and it had just rained and it was just, the sun went down and I caught it. And I was just driving and just so appreciative of living. Just the little things like that are things that are evaporated, deleted from our minds when we're ruminating. One of the things that really just ate me up for at least a year and a half was how could I be so damn foolish? I mean, I shamed myself in every way. I sat in self-loathing and just could not believe that I was surrounded by so many of these vulgar creatures and I was completely oblivious to it and that I was sleeping with the enemy, a, a, a person that was trying to destroy me and torture me. They're demonic. They really are. They're demonic. They're evil entities. And I just... It just ate me up inside. Another thing that ate me up inside, what will people think? There was a time when I literally said to myself, I will never tell anyone about this. And I struggled with that back and forth. I was torn on which way I was going to take this show. I'd already written three books, one that's already up and that's on the website, that's for free, and then two others that are being edited and put together and I didn't want a part of me didn't want anybody to know about this you know because I, I felt it would tarnish my reputation you know and, and, and in some people's eyes it has but I could give a French toast I could care less I don't give a what you think and that's part of what drives the rumination is that we're overly concerned with what people think. And these kind of things eat you up while you're working, while you're driving, while you're watching a movie. The narcissist is renting space in your head for free. They've got a mansion in there with a pool. And they got a condo. And they got a cabin. And they got a, 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 a an SUV and a in a uh, a trailer or whatever, in a boat, and et cetera. They are deep in there. And that was their goal. So you're not doing them any favor by doing this. And there's a time when you have to come out of it. So if you want to come out of it, here's the takeaway in the tools for today. You want to say out loud when you start to think of these types of things and you start to ponder, why did they do this? Why did he do that? Why did she do that? Why is my mother this way? Why are there so many creatures like this? And you're just caught in the, the, the swirl of negative thinking from the experience of these people. And again, there's no shame. This is natural. Don't start freaking out and shaming yourself for doing this. This is the normal fluidity for me to get healthy again. But I want you to say to yourself at least five to 10 times a day, regardless if you're thinking of them or not, 
and especially when you're thinking of them, say, I am willing to focus my mind on the future. And then just tap your nose three times. Just It's just building habit, habits. It's neurological programming. Just, just, I am willing to focus my mind on the future. And you're communicating that to the universe, to God, and to yourself. And then laugh. Now, this is going to be hard depending on how what stage you are in this. But when you think about all of the horrific things they did to you, how they humiliated you and belittled you to your friends, people you didn't know, and strangers, and all of the horrific, just unimaginable filth that they threw into your life, just laugh. <laughs> and if you're in public, smile. But just laugh. Because it's a fucking joke. It really is. And you've got to find the humor in it to get your head out of this stuff. Just laugh. Just laugh and say, I am willing to focus on the future. I know that sounds crazy, but that laughter is going to make you feel better. Remember, the imagine, our imagination cannot differentiate between reality and pretend. So right now, just try to give a laugh on a level four. Like, <laughs> that's about a four. Then take it up to a six. <laughs> you know, and try to give me a 10 laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? You feel the difference? Try the laughter. Start to incorporate that into your life. This is, I'm telling you, this stuff matters. And you will start to feel it and you will start to laugh and see what a joke they are. They're like flies. I mean, almost weekly, I have to get rid of a, a friend on on Facebook or other social media stuff because they're so toxic and they're just, they're so clear at who and what they are and what they're doing that it's hilarious. I don't call them out. I don't, I don't slay them, which would be easy to do with their little statements or whatever. I simply erase them out of my life. That's what's beautiful about technology though. Man, that'd be great if you had one of those men in black things that you could just boop and clear your head of the memory of any narcissist you were around and make them disappear too. But online, you can do that. You can just, psh, you're gone. I don't have to ever see you, think about you, interact with you again for life. Adios. See you later. Bye. I ain't the one. It's over. You know, come on, man. Come on, man. You've got to start to take control of your emotion and your focus. Does that make sense, you guys? And you can do that by simply changing your focus and your communications to yourself. Okay? I'm glad you guys stopped by the day. I appreciate you. Remember, comment, give a like if there was anything empowering today's show for you. And I will see you on the next video. Until then, this is Darren. This is Fully Alive Again. And I'm out.